WISN 12 is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're highlighting Hispanic culture right here in Milwaukee. What does Milwaukee mean to you? We're very proud of our culture. The history, the art, the food, and the people. Representation matters. But there's a lot of work to do. Learn the importance of the month-long celebration and what it means to be part of this diverse community. This is a WISN 12 Project Community Special, celebrating Hispanic heritage. We're here at the United Community Center right near 9th and Mineral on Milwaukee's south side. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm Diana Gutierrez. And I'm Gabriela Garza. And I'm Dario Melendez. As you walk through the front doors, you can see Latinos from Wisconsin and across the world who have made an impact on Hispanic culture and history. Hispanic Heritage Month started back in 1968. It was just a week under President Linda B. Johnson. 20 years later, it expanded to a month-long celebration. Hispanic Heritage Month now runs September 15th to October 15th. It starts in the middle of the month because Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua all celebrate their Independence Day September 15th. Mexico and Chile celebrate their independence just days later. The theme for Hispanic Heritage Month this year is Unidos, inclusivity for a stronger nation. United within the Hispanic community and the communities many now call home. That's right, and I was able to chat with some of the Latino Brewers players about what unity means to them. Adamas grab ball, left field. We feel really proud to represent the Brewers. Willie Adamas, along with Luis Surias and Freddy Peralta, all say the city of Milwaukee embraces their culture and heritage. Being a Latino, not from Milwaukee, playing with the Brewers, do you feel like the community has your back? And since last year when I got here, you know, they've been supporting like really big time, you know, for me. So it's been really a special time, that, that this time that I spent in Milwaukee. Unidad or unity is the theme for this year's Hispanic Heritage Month. And while these players are not from the same countries, they connect over their love for being Latino and the game. De otros países, de habla hispana también. Eh, nos llevamos muy bien con los mexicanos, también con los venezolanos, con todos los boricuas. Es decir que es muy importante para nosotros mantener esa relación. Nosotros como latinos tenemos que ayudarnos uno con otro y nosotros por lo menos en, en el deporte eh, se ha creado ese mandato y tú sabes, como que nos hemos unido un poquito más y, y, y creo que eso nos ayuda un poco a conocer las otras culturas y, y pues a sentirnos más en familia. Es algo, es algo muy bonito porque uh, somos de diferentes países pero siempre los... Los Latinos hemos sido muy unidos, somos como, como una familia dentro del equipo. The Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sport at the University of Central Florida released the 2020 Racial and Gender Report Card. The opening day rosters for the MLB that year featured 29.9% Latino players. Milwaukee's Latino Brewers players say they're grateful to have teammates that embrace their culture. We, we always loud and we got the music going on over t every time, so you know, they, I feel like they, they kind of like embrace that. So it's, for us, it's really, you know, it, it's, it makes us feel like home. So, you know, we, we just try to be ourselves every day. Right now, Latinos are the fastest growing minority in the United States and in Wisconsin. Both Democrats and Republicans are trying to appeal to the Latino community ahead of the midterm elections, which are now less than a month away. And throughout Hispanic Heritage Month, 12 News has highlighted the focus from both sides. Do you think that your party, the Democrat Party, has lost touch with Latinos? I will tell you, I have been um, so proud to be here with Latino leaders in Milwaukee talking about the work that we have done as an administration that has been focused on the Latino population. Hispanics finally found out that they identify much better with the values and principles of the Republican Party. While Latinos don't all vote one way, there are issues that stand out in the community. 12 News' Courtney Sisk asked Latino voters what's top of mind for them this election. While the Latino community is the fastest growing minority group in Wisconsin, the growth isn't necessarily reflected in politics. Uh, even though we see these vast population, this vast population growth in terms uh, of our numbers, uh, it's not necessarily translating into the vote. Milwaukee residents we spoke to are looking for answers. I think there needs to be more um, information on like how to vote, when to vote, and for the Latinos specifically. The lack of trust from community members with, you know, our people in, in office. Residents say several issues are important to the Latino community. La Latino comunidad necesita oportunidades de trabajo, 
eh, una reforma migratoria también. Nosotros, yo considero que a mi manera de pensar, los demás podemos pensar igual. O sea, el candidato que venga, sea republicano o, o, o demócrata, que nos dé ese apoyo que necesitamos los latinos. Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. Early voting is available throughout Southeast Wisconsin starting Tuesday, October 25th. For the latest information on when and where to cast your ballot, head to WISN.com. As the Latino population grows in Wisconsin, so does representation at every stage. Tonight, we want to introduce you to some of the people paving the way for future generations right here in Wisconsin. That's right. I spoke with Wisconsin's first Latino lawmaker and UWM's first Latino police chief. When you walk into this courtroom knowing that you are going to see people at their worst, you essentially put every effort into rational empathy. It's the type of empathy that is informed of facts, of history, of understanding. Okay, so that'll be the next court date. Pedro Colon is a circuit court judge in Milwaukee County. He interprets and applies the law and... We also have a community to take care of. You have to make sure that everybody who comes before you is heard and listened to. Before taking the bench, Colon was the first Latino elected to the state legislature in November of 1998. Before that, there was never a Latino elected to any elected office in the state. He says the power of having elected Latinos in office weighs heavy on the changes seen in communities of color. Although we had great organizers in the community, like Jesus Salas and, and many others, um, we didn't have the actual power of an elected office. Judge Pedro Colon tells me representing the Latino community is more than just having a tilde in your last name. It's about what's being done to further and continue that representation. Look, I was a first, but there's a lot of work to do. Our community is still lagging behind on so many indicators, but it should also be an understanding that that's just a beginning, a beginning to something that's already much bigger and that already should be developing much broadly. Colón was always interested in law, but didn't always feel like he belonged. It wasn't until he stepped into this courtroom with his high school law class. I think when you are come from a background where uh, fairness is hard to get and hard to come by, you start looking at the details more uh, clearly and uh, you want to dig into those. And, and that's what I wanted to do. Do you think with that with the Milwaukee area Latino population increasing, we have enough representation in our courtrooms in terms of judges and elected officials? What is the right amount of representation? I think it's more. I can tell you clearly that we need more representation. University of Wisconsin Milwaukee Police Chief David Salazar says his team of 44 employees bear the responsibility for safety around campus. We have a lot of uh, near neighbors and students that actually live to the south of us and to the to the west of us. So we want to make sure that their particular neighborhoods are safe. Chief Salazar retired from the Milwaukee Police Department in November of 2021 after 25 years. He's been on this job for nine months, a complete shift from what he was used to. Here at UWM, it's exactly the opposite. It's 80% community-based and 20% crime. So I'm actually getting to do a lot of things that I actually find more enjoyable. When you got the job, did you know that you would hold the title of the first Latino police chief on campus? It, it got mentioned to me, but more importantly, when you do become successful, I think you have a duty to, you know, pass it on to the next generation and explain how you got to where you were. When UWM Police Chief David Salazar realized he would be the first Latino police chief here on campus, he knew that role was based on integrity, of course, but also huge responsibility. Right now, he's working on improving transparency by posting the police department's 100 policies online, including use of force and body cameras. He says interaction with staff, faculty and students is also high on his priority list. One of the things that we're launching this September is our Citizens Academy. We've decided to cut our time in half and make part of it instructional, but then get those students, those faculty members, staff, or even community members out of their chairs and actually doing things. He tells me he's able to make these changes thanks to people who supported him throughout his career. Especially my parents. Uh, by instilling you know, a good work ethic. Salazar's mother passed away in 2007. And I know she's looking down and um, is happy and is proud. My dad is 
extremely proud. The day that when I was sworn in here, actually I had him pin my badge. That day, Salazar's dad told him this was an opportunity of a lifetime. He told me don't squander it, you know. Yes, you're going to be the first Latino police chief at UWM, but be a good one. Make some positive change and inspire the next generation of your officers. This year, Milwaukee elected its first Latino Common Council president. 12 News sat down with Jose Perez when he first took on the job in April. First of all, it's an enormous amount of pride, not only for me, my family. Our community is, is very much supportive of being more engaged in politics and in the public arena, and we're looking forward to this. It is uh, wonderful to see uh, in one of our highest elevated positions in local government, um, the first Latino um, serving as our president. Joe Casa Zamripa is Milwaukee County's first Latina alderwoman. Now coming up, celebrating Latino art. Next, we're going inside Latino Arts, Inc. The Emotional Art Gallery exhibit on its way out and the cultural celebration they're setting up right now. Plus, a look at the art outside, the Latino artist reaching new heights in his career this year. Stepping into the Latino Arts Inc. gallery, you can see the bright, beautiful colors of the latest gallery exhibit. The Effects on Time and Memory by Wisconsin artist Richie Morales takes us through the painful journey of Alzheimer's. It's fitting that the artwork is actually on display here. United Community Center runs Wisconsin's only Spanish-speaking memory care clinic. I spoke with the artist and the center about why this is a critical issue for Latinos. After he passed away, that impacted me very deeply, so I started to dig in what's memory, what's time. Guatemalan-American artist Richie Morales turning his grief into art. Alzheimer's robbed him of his grandfather. When you remember something, how of that how much of that is the truth, or how much is uh, another event mixing with another event. His exhibit is called The Effects of Time on Memory, on display at the UCC, the center a safe haven for those like Morales' grandfather. Just having that start and being able to get the proper help at early stages, that's the critical part of our role for the Latino community. The United Community Center is the only Spanish-speaking memory clinic that you can find in the entire state of Wisconsin. Their goal is to focus on early detection and raise awareness, as well as improve the quality of life of the person diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But Latinos, you know, are one point time more likely to develop Alzheimer's. The memory clinic offers free assessments in Spanish. When people try and do the diagnosis in English, that also affects the results of the exams, you know, because they're not doing it in the primary language. So it might not be the memory part, it's the language that people just can't recall. For now, they're focused on prevention. So especially in the Latino community, the resources are really scarce. So having um, a place that they trust and that they feel like a, a home, like family. Latino Arts MKE rotates their gallery several times a year. The effects of time on memory is now on its way out, but the center is getting ready for a new display, Dia de los Muertos. That's right, every year the center displays several different ofrendas, which are memorials to lost loved ones. And some are dedicated to family members lost due to the pandemic or COVID-19 and other illnesses. Others dedicated to those who fell victim to violence in our community. That exhibit opening its doors October 20th. From the art inside the community center to the art outside. A mural welcomes families to the Bruce Guadalupe Community School, also run by UCC. Murals have become an important part of Milwaukee's urban landscape. Mauricio Ramirez's artwork was on display at Latino Arts last Hispanic Heritage Month, and now you can see his work all across the city. I sat down with him to talk about how his career has skyrocketed over the last year. Some childhood memories one can never forget. For Mauricio Ramirez, it's when he created his first Milwaukee mural in 2005. It was actually literally a block away from here where my uncle gave me his back of his garage to paint and it kind of faced the expressway. But not a lot of people know that because it, it was painted over uh, maybe like 10 years ago. Through practice and patience, he was able to get his first professional mural displayed on Wisconsin Avenue. Most recently, he's the artist behind the Selena and Giannis mural in the city. What does it mean for you to have your art showcased and seen throughout Milwaukee? It's the biggest honor. Not only that, but I think it's a huge like indicator of how people are viewing public spaces as a way to transform areas into more positive spaces. 
Ramirez tells me it's more than just selecting an artist or athlete to portray. Take the Selena mural, for example. Ramirez says it's about the meaning it gives to the Latino community. People have been coming up to me and complimenting that, you know, it's just a great piece for the neighborhood and, you know, really gives the neighborhood some, like, vibrancy and some culture. Selena was this awesome singer. You know, and for her to still be living here and is just a reminder that, you know, shows us the power that we have. And it didn't take long for people across the country to see what Ramirez was doing. This mural really kind of catapulted me into, you know, the national circuit of like public art just because of the scale and the visibility. And I think people look for that when they look for an artist to try to create a commissioned artwork. Artwork like this opened up other doors. Right now he's working on multiple projects with Children's Wisconsin. Having his artwork displayed in a city he calls home makes Ramirez feel proud, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. It makes me feel a little bit different, you know, knowing that my work is being seen, you know, by everybody in the city. And, you know, I think that holds a little bit of weight because, you know, you just can't be doing things unprofessionally. You know, you're now in the visibility of the city and you just need to kind of walk uh, like you own it. Coming up, celebrating the love of baseball in the Latino community. How one local team is making Hispanic heritage a year-round celebration. Plus, the new gear available right now bringing baseball and Latino culture together. A few weeks ago, the Milwaukee Milkmen were one bad inning away from winning their second title in three years. And ultimately, they were unable to bring home another championship here to the Cream City. But they were able to bring some Hispanic flavor back to the community. When the Milkmen swap out their standard black and white uniforms and become the Lecheros de Milwaukee, it's about more than sporting a vibrant look. It's about celebrating a culture and a community. There's a, a, a little community in here um that that they're latin as well same as us there's no many people that have the opportunity to represent like a little community we wanted to do something and embrace the community and you know with the latin american baseball community it's so big in professional baseball and amateur baseball so i thought it was something that was really unique and be great for the city of Milwaukee and the, and the uh, surrounding areas. And just something like this is so important and so special. Which is why the Milkmen wasted no time bringing Copa de la Diversion, or the Fun Cup, to Milwaukee a season earlier than it was supposed to start. It's a season-long event series in partnership with Major League Baseball that highlights Hispanic culture and values through special activities and unique uniforms, an effort that is not lost on the Milkmen's Hispanic players. I see the organization doing that for the Latin community is something special for us, you know, that, that make us feel like uh, whatever you do, you know, make, make, make a a highlight for the, for especially for the fans, for the community. It also makes the Hispanic players and coaches who are from all over Latin America feel at home. Every time I wear this highlight, I feel like we have a Spanish game going on. I feel like home, like I feeling like I represent Venezuela, my small town. And obviously, you know, the, the closer you feel home, is it, the better you play, you know, the better execute players, you know, your energy level obviously always high. So I guess that was a, a good a good thing. You feel like uh, you play for your, for your people and, and for your hometown. You know, the, the baseball is not from, from Latin America, you know, it's from here. And, and go out there and, and to be outstanding out there, that's that's really important for me and made my people proud. That's one of the best things in, in, the, in, the, in the sport. The Brewers are also getting in on the celebration. During the Yankee series this year, they held their Cerveceros night. Cerveceros, Spanish for Brewers. The team also released new gear this year, showing off different pieces of Hispanic culture. The Hispanic flag tee, this is from Tiny Turnip, a new vendor that we brought in. It kind of represents all the Hispanic countries um, that we've never really done something like this. We've done the sugar skull, we kind of freshened it up a little bit, gave it that brewer's love um, that kind of screams out Milwaukee. We got the beer mugs, we got the cheese, we got our state logo, got the, um, the wheat, the beer wheat. So we kind of just took something that they were already using, incorporated and made it into brewers. Now you still have time to pick up some Cerveceros gear in the pro shop. The last day is October 15th, the end of Hispanic Heritage Month. When we come back, one final piece of Hispanic culture. We're taking you inside a Latino bakery, serving the community in more ways than one. Stay with us, you won't want to miss it.
Tonight, we highlighted Latinos paving the way for the next generation in sports, in arts, and in politics. But there is one piece of Hispanic culture we couldn't forget, the food. Before we go, I'm taking you inside Todo Postres, serving the community in more ways than one. A sweet, warm aroma fills the Mexican bakery on 9th and Oklahoma. There you'll find beloved classics like conchas and flan. Tenemos uh, no solamente postres latinos, mexicanos, tenemos diferentes tipos de postre. Desde tres leches, tenemos tiramisu, cheesecake. It all started nine years ago in their kitchen at home. Por un año estuvimos trabajando en nuestra casa eh, y hace ocho años que inauguramos el, el, el todo postre. Jesús Bisoso and Pedro García felt like they could give more. Eso es una de las cosas por las cuales nos llamó la atención también abrir la pastelería para hacer esos diseños que tal vez antes aquí en Milwaukee no se no los encontrábamos acá entre nuestra comunidad latina. Now their talent set them apart. La gente puede traer el diseño que quieran y nosotros hacemos todo tipo de diseños, eh, figuras, formas, diseños. Lo que la gente pida, nosotros lo hacemos en pasteles. Their dedication to the community goes beyond a taste of home. Cada jueves tenemos nuestro programa que es en vivo. Eh, hacemos entrevistas en vivo a diferentes eh, dueños de negocios. El único punto es darle pues un poquito eh, que se conozcan más los negocios latinos con nuestra gente latina aquí en Wisconsin. As their business continues to grow, they'll never forget their humble beginnings. El punto era ese, ¿verdad? Que tuviéramos éxito, pero nunca nos imaginamos que una cosa nos iba a llevar a otra. Thank you so much for watching our Hispanic Heritage Month special. You can find all of our project community coverage and stories at WISN.com and also on the 12 News mobile app. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.